What's going on everybody? Ronnie DiMaggio here, product specialist at BMW of Morristown. And in today's quick video, we are going to be going over what in my opinion is the best way to configure your new BMW. So these new BMWs are super, super customizable and configurable. That means there's a ton of settings and adjustments that you, the owner and driver can make. And very often when we're doing uh, new vehicle orientations, deliveries with clients, I get asked the question and our other geniuses get asked the question, what do you think? How would you set this up? What do you think the best setting is? And in this video, I'm going to answer that question, let you guys know what I as a BMW product specialist think might be the best way to configure your BMW. Now, of course, these are personalizations, which means they are personal to you. So feel free to, and I'm sure you will disagree with some of the things that I like to customize in BMWs, but this will hopefully give you a good baseline, a nice starting point to get your BMW set up in a nice way, and then you can adjust it further from there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in the car and we'll get to adjusting some settings. All right, so here we are inside of a 2023 X5. Like I said, we're doing the X5 for this video, but I'm not gonna go into anything that is X5 specific. I'm gonna make this video as generally applicable across the BMW model lineup as universal for modern BMW owners as possible. All of the uh, infotainment stuff is gonna be based off of iDrive 7, so that'll be any BMW between uh, 2018 or 2023, 2022 or so, depending on what model you have. So. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing that you as an owner will want to do is set up the My BMW app. So first thing you want to do in order to get that going is go into your email. You should have gotten an email from BMW ID. Go ahead and click on that. Activate your BMW ID. Click on the other email from BMW US and accept the terms and conditions. Log into the My BMW app. That's MY BMW Apple App Store, Google Play Store. Go ahead and log in. Your car should pop right up. Make sure all that's set up first and then go into car, driver profiles, add driver profile, and then once the car has been registered with BMW, you'll see an option here that says uh, log in via my BMW app. Go ahead, click that, scan the QR code, and your profile will load into the car. The reason you wanna do that stuff first is because all of the adjustments that we're gonna talk about here will save to your driver profile. So if you adjust the seat memory, for example, it'll save to your driver profile. So that's step one. Now let's get started with all of the adjustments that I like to make. We're gonna go over some basics like seat controls, then we'll move into infotainment, change around some settings. We're not gonna get into every little setting in detail, just the important ones that I personally like to adjust. So first thing you wanna do as soon as you get into a new car, adjust the seat. Uh, all your seat controls are on the left side of the seat here. Uh, unless you have a new 7 Series or an IX, they'll be up on the door. But anyway, go ahead and adjust your seat controls, get the seat into a comfortable position, and then go ahead and adjust your two side mirrors as well as your central rear view mirror up here on the windshield. That's step one. You want to make sure you're comfortable in the car. You have good visibility. You can see everything properly. So get the seat comfortable, get the mirrors into a good spot. And another adjustment I personally like to make is I like to keep the mirror adjustment switch over to the left. That means that when I put the car in reverse, the passenger side mirror will tilt downwards to show you the curb. That's what I like. I like to hug the curb as much as possible. So that little mirror tilt helps you uh, be able to do that. Next, what you wanna do after you adjust the steering wheel seat and side mirrors, go ahead and press set on the door and then number one, that will save those configurations to your driver profile and to your seat memory. Uh, on certain cars, the steering wheel will be manual on the X5, it's uh, electronic, but uh, other cars it'll be manual and won't save to your memory. Uh, central rear view mirror on the windshield never saves to memory, of course, it's always manual. Next thing you like to do is press the auto button for your headlights. Make sure your headlights are in automatic mode. In the X5 uh, and many other BMW models, there's a little cluster of buttons sort of right in front of your left knee on the dashboard. There's a silver button that says auto. Make sure you press that to put the headlights in automatic mode so you never have to personally worry about turning on or off your headlights when it gets dark out. The other thing you wanna do regarding your headlights is activate the automatic high beams. Now, you can press this button, which is located on the end of your turn signal stock. You can press it a million times. If it's light out and the automatic headlights are not activated, pressing this button won't do anything. So wait until it gets dark out or when you go into a parking garage or something, press the auto high beams button there. 
on the end of the turn signal stalk. Also in that area is the BC button. Now, personally, I don't do anything with the BC button. I like to leave the configure bulk gauge cluster screen on the right side of the instrument panel on the default, which shows your gear position as well as your drive mode. Uh, that's where I personally like it, but a lot of people like to switch that over to the infotainment display. Uh, and you can do that by toggling through that menu using the BC button and only the BC button. So go ahead and set your gauge cluster up. Next thing with your other stock is of course your windshield wipers. So these are also automatic. Go ahead and click those up once until the green light that says auto lights up green. And then use the dial on the stock to adjust the sensitivity of the automatic wipers. I like to put these one click from the top. That's what I think works best, but uh, play around with that yourself and figure out what you like. Uh, make sure you turn that off if you go through an automatic car wash as well. Make sure you don't leave your wipers in auto mode. So go ahead and set your wipers up to automatic mode. And as far as basics that are driver central, that will pretty much uh, do it for the things that are, you know, right in front of the driver's steering wheel and to the left. So let's go ahead and move into the center screen here. We'll start at the top of this menu on the left here uh, with media. Go ahead and set some favorite radio stations. You can go ahead and select your favorite radio source, click on it, select a station, and click add to presets. So make yourself a couple of presets just so you have something to start with if you like listening to the radio you'll have a couple of radio stations that will uh, be loaded into your presets there. And now, something that I personally like to do to make presets easier to access is I like to save the presets menu to number one on my one through eight configurable buttons here. That way, no matter where you are in the iDrive screen, you can just press number one and it jumps you right to your presets uh, so you can always access those quickly. That's really it for media, not much else that is configurable in there. Let's go ahead and communication. Of course, you're going to want to link your phone to Bluetooth or Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, whatever you like to use. So to do that really quick, just go into mobile devices here via the communication menu, click on new device, phone calls and audio, and it'll start looking for devices nearby. Next, we have navigation. Go ahead and click on nav. There's a couple of things that I like to do in navigation. First, if you're an owner, you'll want to go into my destinations and save your home and work address. Go ahead and click set home address here, enter in your address, and then you can also save that to one of your one through eight buttons here as well. So you have quick access to that, or you can use voice control, this button on the steering wheel uh, to say, take me home and you'll get taken to your home address. Another thing I like to do with the navigation system as far as map settings, click over to the right here and go to map settings. I like to change the map view from facing north to direction of travel. And I also like to use manual zoom. I think I might be in the minority there with the manual zoom, uh, but it's so easy to just, if you're using navigation, scroll the iDrive knob here uh, to manually uh, zoom in and out. And I think that works a little bit better than the automatic zoom. My preference, like I said, uh, play around with both and see which one you like better. Speaking of nav, a very common question that I get asked as a product specialist with BMW is uh, when I ask clients, would you like to set up Apple CarPlay? A lot of them ask me, what do I think? What do you use? You know, what's your preference? I personally, and I know I'm in the minority here, don't generally like using Apple CarPlay. Mostly, uh, and this might be a little silly to some people, but mostly for the aesthetics. I just don't like the way the screen looks. I'm not a big fan of Apple's sort of corporate aesthetic with the app icons and stuff like that. I, I'm an iPhone user, so it's not a huge deal, um, but I personally don't really like the way CarPlay looks on the screen. And I also think BMW does such a good job with making iDrive intuitive and easy to use and generally effective at doing all the things that it's supposed to do. So I personally use iDrive. BMW's map system works great. BMW's phone app works great. The music streaming is always seamless. Uh, so that's me. Many, many, many people like to use CarPlay or Android Auto. So play around with both, see which one you like. Uh, but that's it for nav. Now let's go into car. And this is the bulk of the personalizations that you're going to want to make. Uh, and they will be found under the settings tab here. So you click on car and go to settings. Let's run through some of these settings that I like to adjust. So in general settings, there's only two things I like to change. One is I like to go into voice control and turn on the wake words. You can say H-E-L-L-O BMW. I don't want to say it because I don't want to wake up the personal assistant, but you can say that 
to give commands about phone, nav, media, or climate control, things like that. Uh, the other thing in general settings I like to change is sound. I like to adjust the configuration of the sound system. For me, I listen to like a lot of electronic music and things like that, some other genres, but mostly, you know, newer music. So I put the treble in the middle and I turn the bass um, all the way up. Again, that's all up to personal preference. Depends on what type of music you like to listen to, but uh, that's how I like to set it up myself. Jumping out of general settings, we're going to skip right over drive mode because I don't change anything in there. I think the factory settings are perfect. Uh, exterior lighting, again, one thing that I like to change is adjust the pathway lighting time from 20 seconds by default. The default is 20 seconds. I like to turn that up to 40 seconds so the lights stay on a little bit longer when you get out of the car. It'll light up your driveway or your walkway uh, for just uh, 40 seconds rather than 20 seems to be a little bit better for me. Driver assistance, a couple of things I like to change in here. Uh, number one, if we go into safety and warnings, uh, I personally like to turn off lane departure warning. Now, I won't recommend that you do that because if you do, you're deactivating a safety feature that the car comes with and that is designed to keep you safe and you know keep you out of harm's way on the road. So know that if you deactivate lane departure warning, you are deactivating a safety feature that will make the car safer. So. Don't do that if you're a safety conscious, a super safety minded person. If you're somebody that likes to be as safe as possible on the road, you want lane departure warning on. Personally, I think it's a bit too intrusive, just doesn't really suit me. And generally speaking, if I leave a lane, I'm doing it on purpose. I don't need the car uh, to tell me that I'm doing it or warn me about it. So uh, lane departure warning goes off. For me, everything else is fine. How it is forward collision mitigation on early is good. You don't want to rear end anybody. Uh, you can set that back to medium if you want to. can be a little too sensitive on early. Blind spot detection, absolutely you want that on. Helps uh, protect you from maybe not seeing anybody in your blind spot. Uh, so that's it for safety and warnings. Again, not a ton to adjust in there. Although with parking maneuvering, you want to make sure that your cross traffic warning is on. I've seen this be off by default sometimes, but it's usually on by default. So you may not have to do this, uh, but make sure that's on. So you get the cross traffic warnings. Uh, let's jump over to displays again. A couple things I like to adjust in here. Number one being the heads up display. After you move the seat around, this might be uh, a good time to move the heads up display around as well. For me, I kind of tend, tend to sit a little bit lower in cars, so I have to move the heads up display up on the windshield. So it's a little bit higher than the steering hump here. Uh, so I like to move the heads up display up a little bit. I leave the brightness and the rotation alone. As far as the instrument panel goes, uh, there's one thing I always like to change in here, and that is adjusting the engine display from a power meter to a tachometer. I'm a fan of a traditional tachometer rather than a power meter. Uh, otherwise, nothing I personally change in here. Although, if you'd like to, you can turn off the map display, convert the speed to kilometers, a couple of other little things like that. Let's move into doors and vehicle access. Again, a long menu with a lot of things that uh, I personally like to adjust. Tailgate height, uh, I don't adjust this because I never park these cars in a garage, uh, but if you have a low garage, it's definitely worth your time to adjust this. Comfort access is a nice one, so you can check these two off, unlock and lock when walking away so that you never have to fumble around with a key fob. The car will automatically lock or unlock when you approach or walk away from the car, so I like to go ahead and turn those two things on. Key button assignment, I like to set to all doors. So when I press unlock on the key fob, every door unlocks rather than just the driver's door. Lock in a few minutes. I don't like that one. I turn that one off if I left the car unlocked. I left it unlocked for a reason. I left it unlocked on purpose. I'm not one that tends to forget to lock the car. If you are, then you won't want to adjust that. Um, you'll want to leave lock in a few minutes on, but me personally, I like to turn that off. The only other one in here that I like to make sure is always turned on is fold mirrors in when locked. It's a great one. You never want to uh, be putting yourself in a situation where somebody might knock your side mirrors in. So always make sure those guys are folded in when it's locked. It's also a good indicator uh, to other people that your car is locked. Uh, so you definitely want to check that off. Otherwise, I like to leave these at the default. Uh, for my own settings, but there's a lot of customization in here I know a lot of people don't like when the car beeps when you lock it This is where you would turn that off same thing with the flash and things like that uh, Interior lighting another thing I like to adjust. I always set the color now. This is very personal um, Obviously everybody's gonna have a different favorite color, but 
I like to set it to blue and I like to crank the brightness all the way up and turn off the dimmed for night driving. I like the ambient lighting to be super, super bright. It looks so cool uh, in all modern BMWs, but the X5 especially has really nice ambient lighting. So turn that one all the way up. Dynamic light, by the way, is when you open the door, the ambient light strip on the door will flash red. So if you like that, leave it on. If you don't, leave it off. I don't touch it. Doesn't really make a difference for me. Uh, last thing in here is climate control. Nothing I personally like to adjust in there. Uh, actually, scratch that. There is one thing I like to do. I like to set the sync button to number eight because there's no hard button for sync on the climate control. So I like to set that to number eight uh, to sync both zones quickly. Otherwise, that's the only thing uh, that I like to adjust in there. And key button settings is redundant with the key button assignment right here in doors and vehicle access. So that'll do it for the actual screen itself. Those are all the adjustments that I make in the screen. Let's go ahead and move along to some hard buttons here. With climate, for me personally, again, this is really personal. I like to set uh, the climate control to 70 degrees, automatic, set it and forget it, and then never touch it again unless it's really hot or really cold out. That's the comfortable temperature for me, and auto works really nicely, so uh, go ahead and set that. We talked about these one through eight buttons. I like to set number one to my presets, number eight to sync for climate, and then you can do two through seven for whatever you like, phone numbers, navigation addresses, things of that nature. Uh, otherwise, there's really... Uh, that's the extent of the main configuration that I like to do in new BMWs. Not a ton of things, but we did cover all the basics, all the things that I always go uh, over with new owners when they get into a new BMW. Those are some of the main things. Now, as you saw when I was scrolling through the menu, there's a ton of stuff that I didn't touch on. Uh, I always say if we configured everything in the car, we'd be here for three hours. There's so, so much to customize and personalize in these new BMWs. So. Go ahead and when you take delivery of your new car, the best thing that you can do is sit in it for an hour or two, uh, not maybe all at once, but when you have time, sit in it and play with all the different settings to make sure that everything is to your liking because there's a ton to customize. But like I said, that covers all the basics. Those are all sort of the essential things that I like to change away from the default settings every time I get into a new BMW. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, my preferences are probably different than yours. It's uh, perfectly normal for you to disagree with something that I said. No matter how much uh, a product specialist might know and be familiar with these cars, uh, their preferences can always be different from your own. So uh, hopefully what I gave you was a nice baseline, some things that you uh, might want to adjust for yourself. And then from there, you can go ahead and change things around to match your own specific personal preferences. Because that's what all of these customizations are all about, to put the control in the hands of the owner and the user. Uh, so that's going to do it for the portion inside the video. I know that was a lot of stuff. Uh, thanks for sticking around and hopefully uh, gave you guys a good idea of how to configure your BMW. Let's go ahead and hop outside and we'll wrap up. All right, so that's going to do it for this quick video on how I would personally adjust and configure a new BMW. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and hopefully it gave you new BMW owners a good starting point upon which you can base your own customizations and your own settings and preferences in your new BMW. If you have any questions about anything that we addressed in this video, please drop them down in a comment below. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at BMW of Morristown. If you have any suggestions or requests for future videos, uh, we love hearing those, so drop that down in a comment below. And that'll do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.